Welcome back to our course. In today's episode, we'll be speaking about delegation. The delegation pattern is an object-oriented design pattern, usually allowing for object composition to achieve the same code reuse as inheritance. This pattern has proven to be a good alternative to implementation inheritance, and Kotlin supports it natively, requiring zero boilerplate code. Let's create an interface known as animal. Provide two abstract properties. Have two other methods. Let us have a single implementation of this animal interface. We are going to call this implementation bird. Ensure you override all the properties and the methods. Now, let us assume you want to define another bird animal in its own class. Take, for example, a chicken. Since there are several properties that the chicken shares with the bird, we can use delegation over inheritance to achieve reusability. Let us first implement the animal interface. We can use the by class to take up all the implementations from the bird class. This way, all the properties in bird are delegated to animal. Let's try and run this example. Having these two objects, bird and chicken, we can try and make the sounds. Both of these will have the same output. There you have them, the bird crows. In the event you don't want the bird and the chicken sounds to not be the same, you can override the methods similar to how you would when inheriting a class. Upon rerun, you'll have a different print message. There you go. It is important to remember that members overridden in this way do not get called from the members of the delegate object, which can only access its own implementations of the interface members. Make sound in chicken remains only in chicken. The bad implementation will not change. With some common kinds of properties, even though you can implement them manually every time that you wish to, sometimes it's usually very helpful to implement them only once, either to provide them in some external API or library and reuse them later. An example would be things like lazy properties. These are when they are computed only on fast access, things that are observable, so listeners can be notified about changes to this specific property, and even storing properties in a map instead of just separate fields for each property. The Kotlin standard library supports such type of delegation. And we usually call these properties delegated properties. Let us implement a custom delegate class for our bird's name. To do so, provide this class with a name. For us to use this class as a delegate for our bird's name, we need to overload two operator functions, get value and set value. The get value operator overload has two properties as inputs, a class reference and a Kotlin property. It also returns a string. Set value, on the other hand, has the same two properties with an additional third parameter being the value that you want to set. For our case, let us have the following implementation. In our get value overload, we have simply returned bad and the class reference. In our set value, we are printing the text below every time that the value is set. Now, our class is ready to be used as a delegate for our bad name. Head over to your chicken class and delegate the name of the chicken to the bird name class. To provide a delegate, you need to have the following syntax. One, provide the mutability identifier. Next, provide the name, followed by the type, then use the by keyword, followed by the class that you want to delegate to. Let us try and print out the chicken's name. As we can see, there is the bird keyword that we prepended followed by the object known as chicken. We can customize this a little bit by overriding the toString method for our chicken. 
And now you can see the prepended keyword bud followed by the string, this is a chicken. Let us provide a new mutable property to this chicken class. Let us try to change the value of this official name. Rerun our application. And we can see every time that we have a setter, the print line will be executed. This African chicken property was delegated to this is a chicken. This is a chicken is the get value. African chicken is the value that we have set. They are provided inside our setter. If you try to print out the official name, you will get the official delegate provided value. And it indicates this is a chicken with the prepended bad keyword at the front. This again is provided from our get value in the bad name class. The Kotlin standard library provides some factory methods for several useful kinds of delegates. One of this is the lazy lambda. This function takes in a lambda and returns an instance of a lazy class, which can serve as a delegate for implementing a lazy property. The first call to the get method executes the lambda passed by the lazy and remembers the result. All other subsequent calls to the get simply returns the remembered result. Let's get an example. In our bad class, let us have a property known as can swim that is implemented using the lazy. This property known as can swim will be lazily evaluated in that it will only be initialized when the first call to can swim is called. Any consecutive calls after it will just use the remembered value for can swim. By default, the evaluation of lazy properties is usually synchronized. The value is computed only on one thread, but all threads will see the same value. If the synchronization of the initialization delegate is not required to allow multiple threads to execute simultaneously, we can pass in the publication lazy thread safety mode as a parameter. Alternatively, if you're sure that the initialization will always happen in the same thread as the one where you see the property, you can always use the none option. It doesn't incur any thread safety guarantees and related overhead. Another popular standard delegate is the observable. Observable takes in two arguments, the initial value and a handler for modifications. The handler is usually called every single time that you assign a new value to the property. It usually has three parameters, the property it's being assigned to, the old value, and the new value. Let us try and observe a value. Let us add a mutable property known as age. We'll use delegates.observable to provide our value. Inside our parenthesis, provide the initial value of age. Let's assume our birds start at age zero and then provide our lambda. The lambda has three properties. The first one is a reference to the Kotlin property itself, the old value, and the new value. With this, we have the property reference, check the old value, and the new value. This will be printed out every time we try to assign a new value to age. Let's look at how it works. Assuming our bird's age changes to 20, if you rerun this, you will see the age property provided by the old value was zero and the new value was 20. Let's try and change this value once more. And you can now see the old value was 20 and the new value became 25. Sometimes you may want to intercept assignments and veto them. You can use the vetoable delegate instead. The handler is usually called before assignment of the new property. Let us have the bird's weight. In our scenario with weight here, we are returning a Boolean value that checks whether old value is less than new value. This would mean in the event that this expression is true, then accept the new value. If false, maintain the same value. Let's look at how this works in action. Before executing the example, let us modify the vtable lambda a little bit. 
we print out the values just to know the old and the new. Let us now run this. We can see initially the old weight was 1.2, the new weight became 1.0. If we try to print out weights, it still remained with the old value, which was 1.2. And this is because we have set a condition such that the new value can only be greater than the old value. And hence, trying a new value that is lower will not work. Similarly, we had old value remaining as 1.2, and then a new value was 2.5. And now we can print out the new value, which was 2.5. A property can also delegate its getter and setter to another property. Such type of a delegation is available for both top level and class properties. And class properties can either be member functions or extension functions. To delegate a property to another property, we'll need to use its qualified reference name. Let us add an age property to the chicken and delegate to the bad age property in our top level definition. We can also delegate to member properties of other classes. Let's have our weight reference the bad measure weight property. To have a member function be delegated to, you must provide it as an instance of that class. Such type of delegation may be useful in several scenarios. A good example, as referenced by the Kotlin docs, is when you want to maybe rename a property in a manner that is backward compatible. Introduce a new property and annotating the old one with a deprecated annotation. In our bad class, we have a property known as canfly. We may want to deprecate this method and use a new one instead. Let us have the new one have the following name. Next, we can annotate the canfly method. Lastly, delegate the value of canfly to the new variable. Another good use case of delegating properties is storing the values of these properties inside a map. Let us have our bad constructor accepting a map as a parameter. Next, provide two properties. With that in place, we can now simply have these properties provided within the map and the value will be delegated. Within our bad constructor, provide your properties. We have region being Europe and lifespan being two. Now you can just print out the properties of this part. With that, run our application. We can see lifespan is two years and the region is Europe. This also works for mutable properties and you can use mutable map instead of a regular map. You can also declare local variables as delegated properties. It works exactly the same way as we've done before. This can happen within functions themselves. There are some requirements that you need to have in order to delegate properties. For read-only property, a delegate should 
provide an overloaded operator function known as get value with the two parameters. First is the class reference. This must be the same type or a supertype of the owner of this property. An instance would be we have our bad name class that was being delegated by the bad class. Therefore, this reference needs to be the same type as the bad class. We have used a nullable any type because all types in Kotlin override this specific type. If you're working on an extension property, it should be the type that is being extended. The second parameter must be of the type Kotlin property with a star projection. Alternatively, it needs to be the super type. The get value must also return the same type as the property or its subtype. For mutable properties, a delegate has to add an additional function known as set value. This set value accepts three parameters. The first one is a reference to the super type. The second one must be the property that is of the same Kotlin type property with a star projection or its super type. And lastly, there is a value type. This must be the same type as the property or its super type. Such delegates can still be provided using functions as opposed to classes. Let us try and recreate this bad name delegate to a function type. Provide the type as a parameter. It's always good to give a default. This function should return a read write property. Read write properties require two types. The first type is the receiving type, and the second type is the type that will be output. Return an object literal with the two overridden values that inherit the read write property type. Implement all the methods. You can have a reference to the current value of the property. And then you can reuse this whichever place that you want. This bad name delegate will provide the same exact functionality as the bad name. We've just tweaked a few things around. To use it, we can simply replace it at the top. Within our chicken, Instead of having our name being by bad name, you can have it by bad name delegate. That's a wrap with delegation. There are some few more tips and tricks that you can check out with regards to translation rules for delegated properties. You can check them out in the Kotlin docs. With that, we have come to the end of our episode and our course. Remember, share, like, and subscribe.